In the quiet corners of our hearts, a battle rages. A struggle that isn't always visible, but is deeply felt. This is the battle of spiritual warfare, a concept that may seem foreign, yet it resonates deeply within the core of our existence. Spiritual warfare is not a physical battle, but a conflict that takes place in the unseen realm. It is an internal struggle many of us face when dealing with our spirituality. It's a battle of the mind, a battle of the heart, where our deepest fears and doubts clash with our faith and beliefs. Consider the words from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This verse depicts the nature of our struggle. It's not against other people, but against forces of darkness and spiritual wickedness that seek to undermine our faith and disconnect us from our spiritual journey. In this struggle, we often find ourselves wrestling with questions like, why am I facing this? Or where is God in all of this? It's a struggle that can leave us feeling isolated, misunderstood, and even defeated. But it's important to remember that spiritual warfare is a shared experience. It's a battle that touches every human soul at one point or another, regardless of where we come from or what we believe in. The struggle of spiritual warfare is a reality that we cannot ignore. It's a battle that calls for courage, resilience, and unwavering faith. It's a battle that challenges us to dig deep within ourselves and confront the unseen forces that seek to destabilize our spiritual journey. The battle is fierce, but remember, you are not alone. And as we journey together through this topic, we will uncover the truth about spiritual warfare, dispel the misconceptions, and ultimately discover the hope that lies within this struggle. So buckle up and let's dive into the depths of spiritual warfare. It's tempting to think we can fight this battle on our own, but the truth is, we cannot. Now let's dive a bit deeper into this notion. The misconception of self-reliance in spiritual warfare is a common pitfall. It's a human instinct to rely on our own strength and understanding, to believe that we can navigate this world and its battles alone. This belief, however, is like a mirage in the desert. It may appear real and promising, but upon closer examination, it's nothing more than an illusion. Let's take a moment to reflect on a profound piece of wisdom found in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 3, 5 advises us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This scripture emphasizes the importance of trust and reliance on a higher power, rather than solely on our own capabilities. Think about it this way. If you were in a battlefield, would you rather go into the fight alone, or would you prefer to have the most powerful force in the universe by your side? The answer, we hope, is quite clear. Our understanding of the world is limited. We see only a fraction of the bigger picture, but God, the creator of the universe, sees it all. He understands the complexities we can't comprehend, the hidden dimensions we can't perceive. When we trust in him, we tap into this divine wisdom and infinite strength. In the grand scheme of spiritual warfare, self-reliance is not just ineffective, it's a hindrance. It's like trying to cross the ocean on a raft when a ship is available to us. The ship, in this analogy, represents the strength and wisdom of God. The raft, on the other hand, symbolizes our limited human capabilities. In conclusion, it's crucial to remember that spiritual warfare is not a solitary battle. It's a collective struggle, one that requires divine intervention. We are not alone in this fight. We have the most powerful ally by our side, God. The battle belongs to the Lord, and it's in his strength we find victory. Scene script. Trusting God doesn't mean the battles will cease but it does mean you won't fight them alone. Imagine walking through a storm, the winds howling and the rain pouring down, but instead of being drenched and cold, you are warm and dry. This is the power of trusting God. It doesn't mean the storm disappears, but it does mean you have a refuge, a shelter that shields you from the brunt of the storm. Isaiah, a prophet from ancient times, said in chapter 41, verse 10 of his book, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. These are not just comforting words, but a promise, a divine pledge from God himself. This promise is not a quick fix or an instant solution. 
but a reassurance that God is with us in the midst of our struggles. It's the knowledge that when you feel weak, he will strengthen you. When you feel helpless, he will assist you. When you feel like you're falling, he will uphold you. Trusting God is not about evading battles or hardships, but about having the confidence that you are never alone in them. It's about realizing that the same God who created the universe, the same God who parted the Red Sea, the same God who brought down the walls of Jericho, is with you, fighting for you. Trusting God is a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare. It allows us to stand firm, anchored in his promises, even when the winds of adversity are blowing fiercely. Trusting God transforms our perspective, changing our focus from the size of our battles to the magnitude of our God. And when we trust in God, we are not just trusting in his power, but also in his love. We are trusting in a God who loves us so much that he sent his only son to die for us. We are trusting in a God who values us, who sees us, who knows us intimately, and who desires the very best for us. In the midst of the storm, trust in God's promise to be your refuge. Surrender may seem like defeat, but in spiritual warfare, it's the path to victory. Let's take a moment to redefine surrender, not as a sign of weakness, but as an act of ultimate strength. In the thick of spiritual warfare, surrendering doesn't mean giving up or losing. Instead, it signifies a profound acceptance of our limitations and an acknowledgement of a power greater than ourselves. Consider the wisdom found in the heart of the Bible in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 15. The verse reads, This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. When we're faced with challenges that seem insurmountable, our instincts might push us to fight harder, to struggle more. But the divine wisdom handed down to us proposes a different approach. Surrendering to God in spiritual warfare doesn't mean we sit back and do nothing. It means we shift our perspective, we change our role in the battle. We become conduits of divine energy, instruments of a higher power. We allow God to work through us, to guide our actions and decisions. We trust in his wisdom, his strength, his timing. This kind of surrender requires courage, it requires faith. It demands that we let go of our need for control, our desire to predict and manage every outcome. It asks us to trust in the unseen, the unknown, the unproven. It invites us to step into a space of vulnerability where we exchange our fear and doubt for faith and trust. And what happens when we make that exchange? We find peace amidst the chaos. We find strength in our weakness. We find victory in our surrender. Because in surrendering to God, we're not just giving up our struggle. We're aligning ourselves with the most powerful force in the universe. We're stepping aside to let God fight our battles, to claim the victories that he's already won on our behalf. In surrendering to God, we claim the victory he's already won. Yes, spiritual warfare is a battle, but it's a battle we don't have to fear. Friends, spiritual warfare might seem intimidating, even overwhelming. It's a struggle against unseen forces, a battle within our hearts and minds, a battle where the battlefield is as vast as the universe and as intimate as our thoughts. But here's the beautiful paradox. In this spiritual warfare, we find hope. Think about it. If we weren't engaged in this spiritual struggle, wouldn't it mean that we were simply drifting with the current, conforming to the patterns of this world? But the fact that we face this battle means we're swimming against the tide. We're striving for something higher, something eternal. And that, in itself, is a beacon of hope. Let's delve into the wisdom found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31. What, then, shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? This is not just a rhetorical question. It's a declaration of assurance, a promise of victory. If the creator of the universe is on our side, who indeed can stand against us? This doesn't mean the battle will be easy. It doesn't mean we won't face trials, tribulations, or moments of doubt. But it does mean that we're not alone in our struggle. God is with us, fighting for us, even when we can't see him. And knowing that, we can face our spiritual warfare with courage. We may lose some battles along the way, but the war, the war is already won. We're not fighting for victory, we're fighting from victory. And that is our hope. It's a hope that doesn't depend on our strength or wisdom, but on God's unfailing love and faithfulness. The battle is tough, but the victory is assured. Stand firm, trust in the Lord, and take heart. Your victory is coming. And remember, 
This battle is not a curse, but a blessing in disguise, an opportunity to grow, to mature, and to draw closer to the one who loves us beyond measure. That, dear friends, is the hope in spiritual warfare.